Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Time for another segment on building this new ST70 kit. If there's any parts or tools that are specific to this segment or the build in general, check the description below. Can't guarantee that these links are going to be good months from now, so if they're dead, when you go to look, you may have to go hunt these parts somewhere else. Don't email me. I'm not going to hunt them up for you. So, that said, let's get busy building. Okay, so we're zipping along on our build, and so the next thing we're going to do is hook up the plate and the screen taps from the output transformer to the output tubes. And we're going to be routing these like this. And the blue and the white stripe and the green and the white stripe go to this front tube. The blue and the white stripe goes to the screen and the green and the white stripe goes to the plate. So we're going to put them just like that. And so I'm going to snip these two guys off, strip them back. I'm going to be putting these in the the two upper holes like that. I'm going to bend these around. And solder these two up. Now you can't wait and solder them all up at once if you want to. I prefer just to kind of solder them up as I go along. But either way is fine. And there we go. Got those two connected. The same thing. We're going to run these around and down like that. And once we get these hooked up, we'll have all these twisted pairs of wires connected to something, which was... As you remember, my goal of the order that I was doing this in was to get all these twisted pairs of wires connected to something before we started adding more wiring. And unfortunately, some of this I do have to kind of do with my hand block in the view. Sorry about that. That. Come in and solder these two guys up. Just like that. And you can see how I have these routed. We have the heaters down here low. And then we have these screen and plate leads for the output transformers mounted up high to keep them away from the heater wires. And distance is your friend. So now we're going to do the same thing over on this side. But on, in this case, it's going to be these two right here that are like super close to this output transformer. So I'm going to run them like this direct short path like this and let me think here a minute yeah we're not going to have any ac over here so we can do that so hook those up like that and just take your time here you don't want to be like jumping in and cutting off wires until you're sure that you're actually trimming the right wires because was that the whole measure twice, cut once thing? It's very true when you're doing electronics work. Because once you cut a wire, it's cut. Well, I guess you could. If you had to splice a wire onto one if you accidentally cut one off short, so it's not the total end of the world. But we want to avoid that if possible. So, 
solder this guy up. That. And solder this one up. And do make sure you don't like lay this over and burn the insulation off one of these other wires because that's not good either. So this one, we're going to run this one around like this to keep it away from the heaters like that. So let's trim this one off and then we'll have all of our output transformer leads hooked up to our output tubes and we'll be ready to start working on wiring up the DC part of the rectification with the filter cap, the choke, and all that stuff and then we'll, before we hook that up to the output transformer lead well actually if we could do it even afterwards before we put the tubes in we're going to check and make sure that we have our high voltage DC all going where we want it and it'll be another one of my little test as we go along scenarios so again I don't like the idea of waiting till you've completely wired the amp up to power it up especially if this is your first DIY project because it's going to make it very difficult to diagnose a problem if you end up having one. So let's solder up these two guys here. And I realize on a push-pull amp that the whole noise thing isn't nearly as big a deal because there's a lot of self-canceling that happens with a push-pull amp. But I also believe there's no point in injecting noise that needs to be canceled if you can avoid it. So like routing this wire up like this just makes a lot of sense. You just need to be a little careful when you're putting the cover on it that you're not pinching any wires but that's going to be pretty difficult to do anyway so again let me show you how we're utilizing the 3d space to have this wire come up and across like this to keep it away from the noisy high current 6.3 volt wiring now we do have this ground over here that we need to connect over to here and I'm going to use a piece of solid core 18 gauge wire to run that ground over there. And I'm going to run it like this and around and up to there. So let's trim that off. And I'm not going to solder this end quite yet because I still need to ground the body of this can cap over to this terminal but let's go ahead and and one of the things we can do is kind of interweave it with this other little ground wire we've put here and use this solid wire to kind of help hold that one in place since it's a little more flexible We'll go like that maybe give it one more wrap shorten that little guy up a little bit like that trim this one off and I'm going to do the same thing that I did over here just in the other direction that I'm going to solder that into that bottom hole in that tag strip there just 
just like that and there we go now we got our heater center tap ground wire connected from here over to there and then like I said we'll final side of this when we hook the other wire that's going to go from here to the terminal on there and we might as well put in our two little capacitors on here and we'll be done with that little part of the build so let me find those guys now this is a pretty unique way of grounding the center taps which helps reduce the heater noise in the amplifier they're capacitor coupling it and usually what I do on most of my amps that have a center tap is I either directly ground this or ground it through a couple hundred ohm resistors but they've decided to capacitor couple it which hey it's it works they've done a zillion of these amps this way and so why fight something that actually works and I don't see any reason to change how that's done so we wrap this around trim off the excess and we'll go ahead and solder this one in that now one thing they note is you don't have to fill this hole up if you don't want to honestly I kind of like filling them in <laughs> I feel like it just looks neater but Hey, that's up to you. So, the other capacitor, we need to make sure that it doesn't short out to this other terminal. So, we're probably going to stand it up just a little bit. And one of the things you could do, if you, if you had it, you could put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on that lead if you are concerned about that but i think just standing it up proud of it is gonna protect it from ever shorting out the other one let me zoom in here so you can see this better and we're gonna wire it up like that And if you're like me and you don't like leaving like that hole open like that, you can stand the amp up on its back. Show you how I do this. And it's kind of like when you have one of those little like soap bubble blowing wand things. You can like drag the solder across the hole and fill it in but there we go filled up the holes got these two caps soldered in place and we've got that all finished up so there we go so that's got the center taps capacitor grounded and all happy so the next thing is we're going to install this capacitor and start wiring up the B+. So that wraps up another segment of this ST70 new kit build. want to add that this is not sponsored by Tubes for Hi-Fi, nor do I have any affiliation with them. This kit was drop shipped to me by a viewer that commissioned me to build this for them. Now, I don't normally do like kit builds professionally, so, yeah, I may or may not be willing to do it in the future. We'll see what that's all about. But 
for now we're just doing this one for the channel and for some fun I want to thank all you patreon supporters and folks that make donations at my website if you find this information useful please consider joining my patreon or making a donation at my website it really helps fund future projects and keeps this channel going I also want to thank you regular viewers and especially you subscribers if you haven't subscribed yet please click the subscribe button it's not a big deal to do it doesn't cost you anything and it helps the channel grow and other people see my fun content so that's going to wrap this up until the next segment have a nice day <laughs>